Thank you, Father Jose, for introducing me. You know, for this year, we have general chapter. We have taken the theme, Missionary Disciples for Life in Abundance. You know, what we have taken for our study? Evangelic Gaudium of our Pope, then Saint John's Gospel. I am passionately in love with our Pope because every day I read Vatican News and I am very fond of his values. And I try in my own little way to inculcate in my sisters. Every circular of mine will carry some message about our Pope. On the light of this, I have prepared this paper titled Enlarging the Margins to Integrate the Marginalized Reflections on Making the Formation Relevant to the 21st Century. It begins with the, in the first section one, highlighting some of the salient point of Pope Francis that guide us in the prophetic mission of the church today. Section two tries to call out his deep longings and plans for the mission for those at the peripheries, which motivate us to reach out to the socially segregated, to turn to the economically deprived, and to enlighten those imprisoned in ignorance. And finally, section three deals with the challenges to formation and mission for the peripheries, which must essentially include serious conscientizing the formies of the plights and trials of those in the peripheries and encouraging and nurturing more vocations from the peripheries. I would like to thank the organizers and Father Lawrence and all of you for listening to me right now and inviting me especially to present this paper. And I request to you, to pay attention to this paper because I really took a lot of trouble connecting Pope with our life. Section one, Pope Francis' vision for mission in the 21st century, as we all know, Pope Francis does not confine his mission only to Catholic Church and other denominations. He makes sure to reach out to the whole world due to his sincere concerns for the well-being of humanity and nature. He is often discussed at the global level. His ideas and suggestions are listened to with keen interest. He is a Pope, Pope for and of the social media. He makes the best use of the digital and social media to reach to every section of the people across the globe. Time magazine chose him as a person of the year 2013. Pope Francis's prophetic mission for the world, globalization and progress, Pope Francis, a master communicator of the new world, the first Pope of social media era, the Pope from the new world and Pope for the new world. These are some of the descriptions used for our Pope. His first appearance on the papal balcony on 13th March 2013 went viral announcing a new dimension of a Pope, an icon of hope and an archetypal model of humiliation by church leaders. Pope is convinced that the major global challenges today are not merely political or economic challenges, but deeply moral challenges. Challenges for ethics and economics. Pope Francis identifies many offenses against the basic principles of economic justice, including violations of workers' rights, escalating income inequality, and distortions within the financial sectors of national and global economics. Each is caused by hidden mechanisms, insisting upon morality to annihilate violence. When conflict arises, some people simply look at it and go their way as if nothing has happened. They wash their hands of it and get on their lives. Others embrace it in such a way that it becomes its, they become its prisoners, they lose their bearings, project on institutions, their own confusion and dissatisfaction, and thus make unity impossible. But there is also a third way, and it is the best way to deal with conflict. It is the willingness to face conflict head on, to resolve it and make it a link in the chain of new process, and those peacemakers will be blessed 
affirms Pope Francis in his evangelic Gaudium. Pope reaffirms it in his message for the World Day Peace in 2017. Making mission relevant in the church, family and faith formation. Pope Francis brought out Amoris Laetitia, the joy of love on 8th April 2016, which deeply reflects on the family and family life. The Pope wrote that the same mercy and patience that are essential for building a strong family must be shown to whose families are in trouble or, for, or have broken up. This document subtitled on love in the family is what is known as apostolic exhortation, a document addressed to the whole church reflecting on the themes of the church, life and faith. No family drops down from heaven perfectly formed. Families need constantly to grow and mature in the ability to love. He chooses to speak to them in the terms that are familiar to, the, to them and he says, the memory of the father is not hard disk that saves and archives all our data. His memory is heart filled with tender compassion, one that finds joy in deleting from us every trace of evil. This is to the youth, he says, God's love, the Pope retreats, is one that has to do more with raising up than knocking down, with reconciling than forbidding, with offenses, new changes than condemning with the future than the past. He was very much in love with the youth, you know. God experience and today's youth, youth and the issues related to them always occupy Pope's mind. He always had great hope in them. Time and again he retreats that they are the hope or the whole world up, looks up to them. He intently calls the attention of the young people to the tender love and compassion of God saying, God loves you, never doubt this. And he invites them to find security and embrace in Father. Turning to the economically deprived. Pope Francis is greatly concerned about the unequal distribution of wealth. Message of the World Peace Day, he lights up the dangers of the economic crisis of our times. The grave financial economic crisis of the present time have pushed down to seek satisfaction, happiness, and security in consumption and earnings out of all proportion to the principles of sound economy. He points out, a sad truth, unstrained liberalism only takes the stronger, strong, stronger to the weak, weaker and excludes the most excluded. It is increasingly intolerable that financial markets are shaping the destiny of people rather than serving their needs or that a few derive immense wealth from financial speculation while the many are deeply burdened by its consequences. Turning to the poor and the ignorant, the Pope presents love as necessary ground for our building a culture of encounter, which means that we as a people should be passionate about meeting others, seeking points of contact, building bridges, planning a project that includes everyone. Pope Francis insists upon duty and commitment to one another, especially to the voiceless in the second chapter of Fratelli Tutti. He emphasizes that attitudes and aptitudes of people change in every seven years or even every five years. Challenges to formation and mission for the peripheries. Conscientizing the form is about the conditions of those in peripheries. It is God himself who calls his instruments to serve his people. He never abandons those whom he calls. Rather, he always accompanies them. Just as Jesus was not content to call his disciples, but patiently educated them during his public life. So after his resurrection, he continued through his spirit 
to lead them to the fulfillment of truth. Formation. Formation in our context must focus on the social and cultural fabrics of India. The unity and diversity in terms of cultures, religion, languages and ethnics in India need to be valued highly. While there is so much violence in the world, more particularly in, in India's neighborhood, Indians are able to coexist with enormous diversities. Though there are and unfortunately very forces acting to destroy this unity and diversity, I am sure the deep-rooted spiritual and moral strength of India will always prevail. It is in this scenario we need to enrich our formation programs which would enrich our formers of the diversities of our country. They need to learn about these diversities and especially the cultures of peripheries making the formation realistic and holistic. As today's youth get lost in the digital and virtual world, they need to take extra efforts to become aware of what is going on around them. The formators need to keep this in their mind while dealing with them, further motivation towards hard work, sustained study, intellectual and faith approach to problems. Usually, it is said that a generation gap occurs 25 years, but now, in the modern time, with the unprecedented growth and fast-moving society, the attitude and aptitudes of people change in every seven years and even every five years. It is obvious that the patterns, feeling level, aptitude and approaches, mentality, motivation, language of expression of interiority, worldview, Practically everything undergoes a drastic change. It is in this scenario the formators face serious challenges to deal with formies at every level of their formation. The formators are in a dire need of equipping themselves to occupy many occu occupy their formies in their emotional and spiritual, cultural and academic journey accompany their formies. They need to be deeply motivated to understand them, to see everything from their viewpoints, making theology contextualized. In this fast-changing world, their specializations are common in every field. We, the religious, almost must be specialists in our areas of mission, in terms of philosophy and theology, in order to be relevant and meaningful in today's society, we need to revisit our traditional subjects taught in the traditional ways. Our theology and all other studies must equip our formies to face the world boldly and confidently. They need not only the spiritual experiences, but also intellectual clarity of what they study. Without this contextual and clear intellectual pursuit, no matter how intellectual and moral they are, will not be successful in their ministries. They may be all, they may have all the answers with them, but they will not be clear about the questions to which they are supposed to answer. Current priestly and religious formation tends to emphasize the spiritual, cognitive, philosophical, and theological training of candidates. Emotional and psychological aspects seem to receive much less emphasis uh, as more attention is given to their intellectual formation and skill developments. In very many cases, the formies may do very well in their studies, may be talented in many fields, but they don't seem to manifest enough psychosexual maturity. Their results, this results in unhealthy friendship with those of the com complementary gender and become too cynical with everything and everyone or too timid and nervous in facing corrections or criticisms from the superiors and others. Therefore, the formation must focus on the individual's development, journey and honors his or her life experiences. Attending to effective maturation is essential. Formators need to urgently attend to their own ongoing formative and development journey. 
Since most of the families come from small family with one or two siblings, the sense of tolerance and adjustment, understanding and acceptance are not easily cultivated in their families, as used to be earlier with the large families. The growth in the spiritual dimension must not be left only with the spiritual directors or animators or retreat preachers. Rather, it must be given a holistic thrust. Further, serious attention has to be paid in choosing the formators. Usually, the formators are chosen only based on their intellectual abilities rather than their ability to integrate what they have learned into their personal lives. Yes, we need to be extremely careful to choose the formators who are known for their integrity and just not just for their academic accomplishments. Actualizing the prayer of Jesus that all may be one. When we choose candidates for our diocese or congregation, we must not focus on only few sections of the people or communities or from particular regions. Rather, our approach must be universal and all-inclusive. This becomes all the more crucial as our Indian society is infested with hundreds of caste and tribal communities. Most of the so-called lower strata are unfortunately neglected both in the civil society and in the ecclesiastical circles. Pope Francis in his papal bull Misericordio Volthus referred to his, such a category as those in periphery and existential periphery. They undergo several sufferings. Their voices are always silenced. They are threatened or even annihilated. Their being is not recognized and opportunities for studies and job are very often denied. Pope Francis appeals to us not to add their pain and agony, rather to lighten their burden. Concluding remarks, finally, as a practical suggestion, kindly allow me to bring it to your attention. Every diocese and congregation need to take extra care to encourage more vocations from the peripheries. Very often, the superiors tend to discourage them or even reject them for various perceived reasons or threats, it is not uncommon to see that the candidates from the peripheries are rejected with a lame excuses like they are not rooted in faith and culture, they will leave after getting educated, etc. The most fundamental task of being missionary in the modern world is to manifest God's presence in the world that has forgotten God. All our activities in the socio-economic domains or in the field of education or medicines or pastoral grounds, all must be geared to the manifestation of God's love and presence actualized in and through the life and ministry of Jesus our Lord. We need to prepare our families, keeping this great task in our minds and hearts. Since human beings are not created perfect, but created for perfection, everyone needs the, needs the perfecting and transforming power of the Spirit given by Jesus. I pray that the same Spirit who led Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, Jesus and our founders and foundresses will also fill us with the zeal and commitment. It is the Holy Spirit that makes every missionary, every formator, every formy, and every believer to be like Jesus in words, deeds, and attitudes. It may enable us all to give God to the godless world by being the voice of the voiceless, being the face of the faceless, being the hope of the hopeless, and being the meaning to those who have lost meaning in their lives. Thus, we enlarge the margins of our mission to integrate the marginalized by which our formation becomes relevant to the 21st century. Thank you for your kind attention. God bless us all.